This is my 100% complete LEGO city called 24ville, a project that took me over a year to finish because it was a weird time travel experimental story thing split across five different time periods. Some people loved this gimmick and others hated it, so today I'm taking a tour of all five cities to see if it was worth spending this much time on it. To start off, one of my favorite details was the train tunnel in the back of the city. I had all these big ugly rock pieces with the train going underneath, and it kind of looks really ugly with all the Duplo supports down below there. But this gave us so much more space to work with on this back upper raised platform that you can actually see. So that was great. And the minifigure that started it all was my man Garrett in this farmer's market build. We've got all these different custom food stands, including some sets for every different Lego food costume minifigure. Surrounding this picnic table in the center where you can sit and relax. I've got a love-hate relationship with this leafy archway entrance. It looks really cool, but it is super fragile, like the tiniest little movement is just gonna break, and so I had to rebuild this dozens, if not hundreds of times while filming. But next up, we've got Dino Man Diego's Stone Hut, with this dino skeleton in front that I actually had to buy two of to match the museum one. I just kinda had to shove it in this space between the farmer's market stalls, and yeah, Diego doesn't mind. But to take a closer look at the interior, let's travel back to dinosaur times and see the whole layout. On the left side, we've got a caveman village underneath Terry the Terror, with all these fun, totally time period accurate Stone Age houses, like this factory called Uga with a little conveyor belt inside there. I love that one. This really cool stone barn with this wall I was super proud of, but I didn't actually put anything inside of there, so whoops. But on the outside, they're trying to raise animals and grow crops. It's not going the greatest, but I, I believe in them. They can do it. In the center here, they've invented fire, and we've got the chiefs around this central circle thing. Here's a closer look at Diego's house again with the interior. You can lift off the roof to see all these fun details. There's a stone bed, table, weapons rack, and rug inside. Then finally, Mumbo Jumbo's house recreated from Banjo Kazooie. And you guys found the five skulls, so we made that random music video for you. Then going up these flimsy stairs, we've got the nesting grounds of the most feared Quetzalcoatlus with a silent consonant in his name. I love the rock work I did here with this tan rock work and the big old big old egg in the nest here. Love the little details there. And then across the Megalodon infested river, we've got the volcano. This was another really fun build, and it looks great above the dinosaur forest here. All the different dinosaurs from across LEGO's history living together in harmony. It, it's really quite something. Well, that was a fun blast from the past, but now it's time to talk about the flying castle. I was so scared that these clear support beams wouldn't be enough to support this massive build's weight. Like, that would be awful. But we've got a cute little drawbridge here that opens and closes. Uh, I mean, there's a tree on this side, a bunch of different towers at varying heights that look pretty cool. All in all, a perfectly secure house for Scarlet. There's a water Waterfall coming out of this side that we were actually able to use as another support beam just because it was so sketched getting in here. It, it's still just a little bit wobbly, so we actually added a few extra beams that the original time period didn't have. It's, it's just too wobbly for my own comfort. I would have hated to have this thing fall over because then the orc camp would have won. Just don't look at all the ugly stuff behind there. Yeah, this was an issue of having a side facing build on one of the ugliest corners of my city. This paper I have flimsily taped to my desk here just isn't enough to block everything. So for my next LEGO City, 25ville, to avoid having all this ugly stuff on the sides here, I'm considering moving the whole table over to this side, which is currently even uglier, just don't look at any of it. But by the time you see this video, I'll be in the process of rearranging all that. Anyways, this Aura Camp is one of the smallest and least impressive builds in 24ville, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, we've got a log for you to sit by the fire, training dummies to fight, and a rope bridge to cross. That is my favorite part, I think. It definitely did look better back in its original form, so let's take these magical time minecarts back to the medieval layout, which was honestly one of my favorites to put together. I was a lot more confident with the flying castle back then, so I only had two support beams, I guess in three including the waterfall, holding the entire thing up. And earlier I never showed this amazing way to add a splash of color to all the gray, this little house section. I was able to practice building this medieval style by first making this tutorial tower with literally nothing inside, and these training rings to fly through. Please comment, Wendell, you're doing a great job, bud. He's on the top section of this waterfall with a river going through and a bridge connecting the two sides. On this side, we have the Orc Army and my favorite Tears of the Kingdom inspired floating island, along with this one that's suspended in the air with magnets, kind of. You've seen these minecarts before, but they're sitting behind the main camp area. The bridge still is the highlight, but the whole thing looks a lot better when it's more popular.
populated like this. They've got this catapult they can use to bully the village across the river, and the remains of the caveman civilization with the G from Uga, the cursed silo where the barn once stood, Diego, who died of old age, and this saxophone from said music video from earlier. But I think the village is where this layout really shines. I love all the variety, including the blacksmith shop with this rotating water wheel, Garrett's medieval ancestor's farmhouse growing some carrots here, and in the front, a really sweet looking tailor shop with this like vine trellis along the side here. And surprise, surprise, there's nothing inside. That was one of the downsides of doing all this for one video. But Agent Murphy's ancestor's tavern has this really cool cobblestone wall and the iconic handmade roof with some random animals and a well, a cart, and Morgan Treeman scattered around the rest of the village. Kind of weird how the only thing I kept between cities was this volcano because it was so cool. And I was able to make a little Lord of the Rings orc camp up here and do the whole ring storyline. Plus, it has a slide, so you really can't complain. Like, legally. Like, if you comment any complaints about the slide, you actually get banned. Potential sarcasm aside, this is my favorite house of the city. Marie's French Mansion. The top floor interior is currently gutted because I needed the flooring for my savannah exhibit in the zoo. But we'll look at the interior's former glory in a second here. First, though, I want to briefly explain why on earth we switched the mansion with the soccer field in the video. It had literally zero story reason whatsoever. I just thought it looked better. You can barely see the mansion behind this massive zoo, and while you can barely see the soccer field now, at least you can see the most important part. And at least the field looks semi-interesting when viewed from this overhead angle. I think it just fits here better in general than the mansion would have. But speaking of nonsensical changes made for aesthetics, let's talk about this thing. This is Jacques' newspaper office and ramshackle house, and that's where the logic starts to fall apart. When we filmed the France scenes at the finale several months ago, we had planned to make the newspaper office Jacques' main bill to carry over into the present. But when we put it there, we noticed there was a lot of empty space that was the perfect size for his old house. So our excuse for this one is because it fell off the table when the Eiffel Tower collapsed, even if it is in the next scene, but we're gonna ignore that and just say it looks really cool with both of these houses here. Even from the back, which is an angle I don't think I've ever viewed the city yet. It looks kind of weird. But we can follow the train way back to the train I had going around my French Revolution layout. This was another very cool layout and a very fun video where all the poor minifigures living in these slums had to revolt against the evil rich ruler living in this mansion, who's actually been replaced. Like in the medieval village, these houses are all pretty simple, but they do the job. This hospital is of course empty, but that just means you can fit that many more patients in there. And we've got another look at Jacques' house with all the rats living inside there. The path is just so dirty with all this broken glass and grass all over the place. And then we've got this bakery here that Claude used to run, now taken over by baby Andre and his mom, which brings us back to the newspaper office. You can take the roof off and see all the fun details inside, like this front desk and a printing press, which you can use to make copies of the latest scoops. The latest and scoopiest of which is about how they won the revolution and founded 24 Ville. They won it back from the evil Queen Berry, who's locked up in prison. All the comments were saying, well, technically she didn't just get her wig chopped off in the guillotine, but I wanted to use her in the finale, so that's why she had to survive. I'm sorry for that and all the other inaccuracies in that video. And I'm also sorry Louis had to die. R.I.P. Louis. Out in front here, we have this random tent with absolutely nothing inside, and a bunch of random supplies here that they used to build the Eiffel Tower, which, yes, was so tall I had to punch a hole in my ceiling to actually have it fit. But it was 1,000% worth it to see this. This is the train going underneath the Eiffel Tower. I was so happy to get this working. Just, this tunnel is a little rough. Just don't look at the Duplo, please. It's fun to see the different stages of the battle that was held on this tower with all the planning here, and this is the spot where Garrett had him there, and then this is where they fought with the baguettes up at the top here by the ceiling. But then behind there is yet another factory. I wonder if you're sensing a pattern here with the smokestacks here with the toxic waste. And then I really wanted to make this joke in the video, but it was from the wrong revolution, so I didn't. But then inside we've got a simple little furnace build that I'm surprisingly proud of, and that's used to build the Eiffel Tower's rivets. The waterfall is still flowing, but it's blocked by this dam here, and the water up top looked a little empty, so I made a dock with no boats or anything. But the cool mansion makes up for that. We've got the newly elected Claude with his cannons in front here and all the bushes and the surprisingly important doghouse for Archibald Ooh. here. I was able to squeeze a tiny little carrot garden here with the groundskeeper here on the side. And then we can open these incredible doors with the most luxurious doorknobs I've ever seen into the interior of the house. So this is what the top floor is supposed to look like with all the flooring actually installed. And in there, there's that scale model of the city that I'm actually going to do for all of these different cities in a few days. So 
stay tuned for that. But the first floor, I think, is where it really shines. We've got the ballroom, dining room, and kitchen. All rooms in Clue, actually. And I don't know if I ever showed this in the video, but I love this staircase made with a bunch of panels on their sides. It's a little bit harder to see, but there's also the bedroom in the back here. And as we say au revoir, or however you say that, to the France layout, let's go back to the present for the final few houses. The first of which is the museum with this amazing dinosaur skeleton on top that can open and close its mouth, and it just looks really great up here. We've got Harriet here running the show with her pet dinosaur Fluffy whatever, and I had a lot of fun adding all sorts of tasteful details on this exterior with this banner, but I'm actually going to do a separate video on the interior comparing this with the official modular museum set, so stay tuned for that as well. But for now, I want to show off a few of the board game elements we were able to add to the soccer field, including the Jenga tower there, the Connect 4 in the back by the Series 22 and 23 minifigures. Of course, we've got Bella there with her little Uno reverse card. We've got Gloppy, of course, from Candyland. <laughs> Chess pieces, Catan, and a big Uno reverse card. And on this side, we've got the Spinner from the Game of Life and a Battleship in the water there. I have a confession with the Jenga tower. It's actually structurally supported by these jumper plates in the middle of all the bricks because I was sick and tired of them all falling down the table there. But let's not worry about that now. Let's just relax and take a look at the zoo. Ten floors full of all sorts of animals. I really like this build and video. So much life and detail was able to be packed into this build in a relatively short time frame. We still got the disco floor in place from yet another music video, and the factory does kind of block it, but that's fine. This, of course, is the rocket factory, or the spaceship factory technically, but it wasn't able to fit on the sign here. We've got Cosmo here running the factory, and then I didn't want to spoil the reveal on the finale, so go watch that if you haven't. But on the inside of the factory, we can open up this removable wall to see the conveyor belts and uh, crusher things still work. They It's a little bit tight to, to turn the crank and to pull the lever there, but they both still technically work. This factory was of course used to produce all sorts of spaceships, including but not limited to Benny's brown one, hung very sketchily from the ceiling on tiny little fishing line. Yeah, that, that does not sound very secure. But we've got Denny manning the cockpit here, love that guy, and baby Benny in the nursery here with the space dad jokes. As sketchy as the fishing line is, it's very satisfying to see this thing hovering in air right in front of our YouTube play button, which by the way, if you watch this video this far and still aren't subscribed, what are you doing? Uh, please help us get a second one for this channel, please. I didn't really film any sort of tour of the space area where the factory and spaceship are located, but this is basically all it looked like. It was just four base plates with all of them just plopped on top of it. What I did film though was a tour of the ruined state of the city we see at the beginning of the finale. Obviously we didn't destroy any of the builds, for this at least, we did later on. But that just means we had to build replicas of all the buildings that were pre-built to look destroyed. The train has certainly seen better days. We've got all the toxic waste just spilling out all over the place. And then poor Lewis. Oh no, Lewis. There's a very crucial detail missing from the museum, but at least we have the remains of Harriet and all of the farmer's market stands just completely decimated. All these poor, poor people. Oh, Dog man, P lady, Garrett. Oh no. This is a sad alternate timeline. Oh, Cornelius, no. My favorite ruin to build was the zoo. It was just four brown pillars with the dead Steve and one of the dead animals just on fire. And then we just covered up all the disco tiles because I didn't want to take them off. So they're just under all these gray plates there. It's perfect. We try to get the suggestion of like the angle that it fell over with one of the Z letters from the sign just toppled over like that. And then half the battleship is supposed to be sinking. It's it's stuck there with sticky tack, but it's very loose, so it just keeps falling over. And I almost forgot Gloppy's eyes and mouth there, but he's just sad and melted and on fire. That That's a big rip. We've also got Bella here, and then the Jenga tower, of course, has fallen over, and several of them have fallen behind the stupid table. Another quick thing I want to rant about is this tile here. I had this border of the train tunnel, but the train, every time it went past, would clip it and make it so it wouldn't be perfectly straight, and it bugged me to no end! Just like the last figure we made a house for. This is a Roxy, as named as our live chat, and I built her this thing that took me like two minutes. This is like a Duplo piece, this ugly pink roof, and the door is literally taped on. I just, I couldn't be bothered to figure out a solution with these dark tan bricks. So yeah, with more than enough breath wasted on this figure, that is the completed city. It's done. And while I do get why some people weren't as big a fan of this city, I am so glad I tried this experiment with the whole time travel thing. I think the two biggest downsides is that you couldn't see the city grow 
and change over time in the same way as you could before. Like all the houses just appeared right at the very end. And it wasn't the same. I get that. And then also, obviously, I built way more in each video, making each video take way longer. And I'd like to get what I do per video back to a more sustainable rate. I don't think that's one house per video necessarily every time. I think that would get stale eventually, but I'm not going to be building a full city every time. That's for sure. I'm looking forward to reaching a better balance with everything in 25ville. But that's not to say I didn't really enjoy working on 24ville. This was one of my favorite cities ever with some of my favorite videos, builds, and characters that we've ever done. I've always wanted to try a time travel story and with the distribution of these figures being from different eras in time, it was the perfect time to do it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the general feedback from 99% of people have been super, super positive. So thank you for that. I don't want to dwell too much on the negative, but I do want to address it because I always want to keep growing and changing as a creator. And finally, if you haven't seen the big, massive movie finale I made in this city, go watch that. I think you'll really enjoy it. And to learn how to turn this city and all the cities into cute little micro scale versions, watch this video here. <laughs>